You've got a really good team in today, outsider as well. But first of all, how is she? Yeah, good morning, Aiden. She's um, she's in terrific order. You know, she's really come through in the last couple of weeks. Got that silk coat come through in her, and uh, I'm just delighted with how she's done in the in the last period of time. Just uh, recapping on on the visit we had uh, to your place last week and seeing it, like she really is a relaxed, lovely moving mare, isn't she? What notice? What changes have you noticed with her as a four year old? Well, look, part of it, the best part of a makeup is her attitude, as you know, going on and off the track. And I, I don't doubt we'll see the more of the same today. You know, at the start, she she looks like she's about to go into a flag start in a steeplechase. She just wanders around with, out of care in the world. And that, of course, is preserving a lot of energy for her to perform well in a race. And when she gets out there, by God, does she want to perform? You know, she's a very willing customer, and that's what makes her such a special racehorse. Yeah, you've given her a couple of trials and a, and a, and a patient sort of type build up. What about 1,400 metres? at wait for age because it is a dis different beast to what she was doing at the end of last preparation. Yeah, that's correct. Look, I don't think she's, re you know, like when you have an Oaks winner, we've had kick the piece win an Oaks, and she came back and managed to win a, a Mudge Way, which is the same race as the Tarzino. Um, I don't feel she was really an Oaks sort of horse. You know, I think she's a mile, mile and a quarter perhaps horse, and, and she's got a good turn of foot. So, you know, I suppose if you're making a market up and you're a, a TAB uh, bookmaker, you'd probably be looking at her as an Oaks winner and saying 1,400 metres would be too short first up. But she's got an electrifying sprint over 14 and a mile as well. I'm a little bit surprised in a prep this time around that she's been as thick-winded as she has. We raced her, you know, uh, all those spaced her. We raced her pretty much through the whole whole year last season. And, um, you know, so we didn't need to do much on the training tracks. But this time we've had we required those two trials to get her to this fitness level. And we've just backed off this week the old trainer's adager, getting the work behind them and then freshening them a little bit and getting their fresh legs in the last week of work. Uh, liking that. Uh, what about the trials? What's she shown you? Look, first trial she needed, she had a, a really good blow, and um, that sort of kicked us into gear to realise we needed to go again. The second trial we led, which is out of character for her, but when I was talking to Jason prior to the trial, I said, look, I'm a little worried about how how well, how fat she is inside, and we require a good trial, and a lot of trials with open horses, they sit very quietly and then uh, sprint up the straight, and 300 metres wasn't going to cut it fitness-wise for, for her state at that time. So Jason, uh, you know, after talking, we elected to either lead or sit outside the leader, so she cruised to the front, even sectionals, and, and she did what was required to do there, both for a win and, uh, and of course, winning the trial was nice to see as well. Sean, you've done this before. You've produced a New Zealand Oaks winner to win the Tarzino Trophy, or I think it might have been the Mudge Way back then, uh, and keep the peace. Can you give us a comparison about what you can expect, maybe taking a line through what Keep the Peace did? Sure. Look, with uh, with Keep the Peace, you know, she was a she, she was an outstanding filly. She went on to win twice at Group One level after her Oaks win. Um, you know, she she was uh, she was outstanding. But you know, I would think that, and I've said this before too. I don't think I've had a horse put up performance quite like she put up at Hastings um, when she won over two thousand metres here uh, prior to going down to the Oaks. That was a remarkable performance. And her sectionals in the last six hundred of her races, even when she wasn't winning from extremely wide barrier draws. Uh, were, were quite remarkable as well. So I think she has a turn of foot that's that's very hard to match on top of the ground and keep the piece probably like that little bit of give in the ground, which uh, uh, which which perhaps Jennifer Eccles is the opposite there. She wants that good track, and we're going to get that today. A, a late change in jockey, Sean, with uh, Jason Waddell stood down, replaced by Matt Cameron. How does that affect uh, Jennifer Eccles today? Well, Jason knows Jennifer very well, and that um, so that's probably the key element we're going to miss here. But we're extremely lucky that we have a top Group 1 jockey who's ridden Group 1 winners year in, year out uh, for several years now to be able to replace her with. Obviously, it would be a lot more uncomfortable if, if we were going for a jockey who didn't have quite that experience at this level because, as we all know, the Group 1 jockeys generally win the Group 1 races. And, um, uh, you, know, Jason, you know, Jason having known the horse so well is going to be a little bit of a loss, but I don't think we gain anything, lose anything, I should say, in horsemanship, uh, having Matt on with the record he's got in these types of races. What do you expect from her today, Sean? Look, I, you know, it's it's always hard to say. She's um, 
She's drawn barrier one, and I actually think that's the key point today. I think she'll race a lot handier than a lot of the uh, the form speed maps will show her. Uh, there's no reason for us to have ridden a cold in the past, apart from these horrific gates we've been getting. So we've been teaching her to, to get back in the field for that reason. But uh, she can leave the gate well, and she'll be thereabouts. I think it'll be extremely tempo-related today. There's, there's a few, of course, that will go forward who usually do, and uh, we went up in the running. We'll probably tell us how we're going to perform in the race, but uh, that she's never run a bad race for us before. We've been on a, a hell of a ride for the uh, for the whole three-year-old season with this filly, and I don't expect that she'll let us down at all, this prep at all. So, can she win? I think she can if she gets the right breaks, and the barrier one, the best part about that, of course, is she will relax if she's got cover, and she's going to get cover from barrier one. And Of course, while other jockeys are looking both ways as to where other runners are, Matt Cameron only has to look to the right because he'll have the rail inside him, so he'll make his correct decision as to where to get off the fence, and hopefully it's the right time, and um, we can see what she's got this prep. That's exactly what we wanted to hear, Sean, uh, giving us all the right moves. A outside that, uh, horses such as uh, Swords Drawn, uh, Rum, and then you've got uh, others up at uh, Ruakaka, including the Good Fight, who's been really well backed. Uh, who's the horses that you, you can point us towards today? I think this is the sort of race you'd like to see the Good Fight winning. He's got 61 and a half, and, um, you know, Sam's got to work that out, but... Uh, uh, you know, despite the weight, he looks he looks the best horse in the race, and um, uh, you know I think he'll be extremely hard to beat at this level. I think he's looking for 2,200, if not further. So um, he's going to be probably the toughest to beat. Claiborne's a nice up and coming horse. He's got an awkward gait to negotiate. Uh, Rum, the same situation. He'll go forward, but he also has an awkward gait there. But the 400 metre start at Hastings is pretty forgiving from wide gates. He's got plenty of time to get across. Swords drawn. He's I see his favourite, and um, probably off his record from here last year but you might get a spot or two further back than you'd like to be on for a favourite. Certainly at Hastings, the first day of the run in a true position, it's, it's likely to race handy and, um, and lead a bias again. So if that's the case, he may be giving them a head start. But he'll hit the line hard. And Salt in a swing, we're looking for a return to form to here. And, of course, as he presents anything like his run from last year, well, he'll run cheeky. But we'd just like to see him go a little better than his first two runs. And uh, he did have a year between races just about for, uh, for his first two runs as prep. So he should be nearing somewhere near fitness. OK, I really appreciate your time, Sean. You've given us a good push for Jennifer Eccles and we're wishing you all the very best for Hastings today.